Chapter 9. Yuppie, we get local leave. We were fairly well into the 10-week course to turn us into soldiers. While there were lessons all day and some lectures into the night, 22 platoon had settled into the routine and we were finally getting on top of the soldiering stuff. Our hair was growing back and starting to look presentable, and our dress and bearing resembled that of fully trained soldiers. The course was quite challenging both physically and mentally, with no let up and no downtime. Although we were allowed up to the boozer in those first few frantic weeks, none of us went. There, we were too busy getting our gear ready for the next day's activities. This involved starching our uniforms and polishing our boots and brass attachments. We also honed our skills in the fine art of spit polishing. But eventually, we were getting our jobs done with time to spare, so we had the odd beer. Odd is right, the only beer available at the boozer was Old Kent. We were acclimatized to the cold bracing weather and could do PT, fire our weapons, or carry out fieldcraft activities no matter what weather Hui decided to throw at us. I quite liked fieldcraft, where we learned to read maps and navigate by day and by night. It is a very powerful thing to be able to navigate over close country at night and to know exactly where you are. After some initial teething problems of course. Where the fuck are we? This map is fucked. Fucking compass. Our platoon was growing in confidence. One morning we were having lessons in challenging procedure. Some of our guys were the demo squad and it was their big chance to star in front of another couple of platoons. The challenging procedure was carried out in a set manner. The incoming patrol is stopped. One member is asked to step forward to be recognized. There is an exchange of passwords and then the patrol is allowed to pass through. Our guys with a demo patrol coming back to base. Dot. Halt. Hands up. Who's there? 22 platoon. Coming back from patrol. Advance one and be recognized. This was all done in front of the platoons which were seated on the grassy hill. One of our guys moved up to the NCO and passwords were exchanged. This is done quietly just in case Nigel the enemy is lurking about and we don't want him to overhear our secret password. The instructor was a vaudeville act, as most of them were. They were animated, excited and spoke loudly with plenty of arm gestures. It kept us awake. Now, said the NCO, if you're still not sure about these guys then ask them a question. I've seen American movies where they ask somebody's batting average in baseball. The NCO continued in a loud voice. What has a pouch and jumps around on two legs? At the same time he mimicked a kangaroo jumping up and down with his hands together at the front. As quick as a flash, the lead guy in the patrol, one of our boys from Canberra said, a Sheila. The grassy hill erupted into raucous laughter with plenty of knee slapping and hooting, even the instructor was lost for words, and speaking of Sheilas, we forgot what they looked like. But things were looking up. We'd just been informed that our first local leave would be on Saturday. I'm going to get a route. What about the bromide? Fuck the bromide. I won't drink anything they supply us with at mealtime. No milk, no tea or coffee and no jube juice. Saturday arrived, and we were standing on the company parade ground in our best battle dress uniform. Our shoes were spit polished. The Wagga Sheilas were really going to be impressed. Now men, a word of caution, you are no longer civilians. Whilst you wear that uniform you are the army on display. So don't go silly in town. The MPs will be patrolling about to keep an eye on you. If you get pissed, get in a fight, or make an asshole of yourself. I'll have you thrown in the slammer. Is that clear? Yes, sir, your leave is restricted to the Wagga Main Street, and the Wagga Leagues Club. Is that clear? Yes, sir. A bus will be waiting opposite the Astor pub. It will leave at 15.30 hours. If you miss the bus, you must present yourself back to the guardhouse no later than 1600 hours. If the MPs find you outside your restricted area, they will bring you back here. They are not a taxi service. If they pick you up, they will lock you up. If you are late, you will be charged AWOL. Are there any questions? Dismissed. Well, there goes the route then. We went by bus into town and strolled around in small groups. We did a bit of shopping for personal supplies and visited a few of the pubs. The Sheilas wouldn't even look at us, let alone allow us to get close to them. We couldn't even smell them. Maybe it was because we were looking at them with bulging eyes, gaping mouths and dribbling saliva. We hadn't seen a civilian for a few weeks, let alone talk to one. We were soldiers. We talked like soldiers. Is this how to chat them up? What's a nice fucking girl like you doing in a fucked up place like this? We ended up at the Wagga Leagues Club. They allowed army recruits from Kapuka into their public bar. I ran into one of my cousins at the club and I mentioned to him how great it was that they allowed us in. His response was, the league's club put it to the vote of members. If you blokes are good enough to go to Vietnam to fight for the country, then you are good enough to drink in our club. We were not allowed into the RSL club. What a pity that an organization of returned servicemen, those who have experienced war, did not support the troops from their local army training establishment.
many of whom would be posted to Vietnam within a matter of months.